Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you are joining me today as well. It means that you want to get better at drawing. Actually, identifying your mistakes is the most important way to avoid them and make your drawing look better than ever before. In this video, I would like to share with you five common mistakes and also how to fix them. So let's get into it. At first, we need to get the basic sketch done to lay down the basic outlines. The basic sketch or the basic outlines is probably the hardest part of the drawing. We need to get all the proportions right and it might be very tricky. The first mistake which might be crucial for the whole drawing is starting with details. Uh, when you start with drawing the eyes first and then try to get everything together, well, it's not impossible to get it right but it might be a lot harder for you. As you can see in this portrait, I started with the largest part, the outline of all of the head, including the volume of the hair. It looks a little like an asymmetrical potato, but believe me, this potato will help me drawing all of the beauty of hers. <laughs> I start drawing the very basic shape, of the head, then slowly go over and redefine it uh, into actual shape of her chin, cheeks, the forehead, the hair, the neck and so on, depending on what you or who you're drawing. After getting the largest shape, I recommend you to get into the smaller parts and the features in her face. Which leads me to the second mistake, and that is using no guidelines to draw the right proportions and placement of the facial parts. Of course, you can draw freehand sketches perfectly without using guidelines, but it takes some practice and before you get everything into your hands, it is much easier and much faster using guidelines for it. There are so many types of guidelines you can use and it is totally up to you what fits you the most. Uh, in my case, I like to create these lines to indicate the placement of the eyes with eyebrows, the nose, the lips and the hair. It is one vertical line drawn from the top of her head to her chin to indicate the center of the head and then one horizontal line right in the half of this vertical line for the placement of the eyes. Of course, every face has little different proportions, but still it will help you to get the basics and you can adjust it to Margot Robbie or JLo or your mama or friends. Then there is also a vertical line in the middle of the lower half to find the bottom of the nose and another vertical line in the half of the lowest part to indicate the bottom of the lips. The hairline usually lies in the first quarter of the head. And this leads me actually to the third mistake and that is dark outlines, dark basic sketch. While getting the basic sketch done, we might make a lot of mistakes before we are truly satisfied with the result. And it is totally fine because we have this great invention for these extra super exceptional occasions of being imperfect <laughs> for a moment. And that is called eraser. So we can erase any mistake we do and fix it until we're satisfied with the result. But this is possible only when we make the outlines with light and thin lines. We can simply avoid making these dark thick lines using harder grades of pencils such as H, HB or F pencil in order to create light thin lines. I also recommend not to push the pencil against the paper too hard because the hard pencil can damage the paper or make a trace that can't be taken back anymore. <laughs> so please use harder pencils for the basic sketch as you can see I can erase the lines very easily and fix it right away. 
yeah, even many times, uh, take a control over the pencil with little amount of pressure. And this is a tip also for the rest of the drawing, even the shading parts. I will explain it more in another video devoted to the shading process. And we can get to the fourth mistake, that is using no reference for drawing. I do not want to say it's wrong not to use a reference or to draw from imagination. Please don't get me wrong. I love to draw from imagination myself. What I mean to say is that it's much better to use a reference when you're a beginner and you're trying to draw a portrait of someone but you do not have all the proportion in your eye yet. So no worries, we will get there. But for now we can try it with a reference photo. It doesn't have to be a photograph, uh, you can draw a live object too. The important part is to observe. Uh, before you try to recreate those things and people or plants or whatever by yourself, it is always much better to get to know them, at least how they look like. You do not have to copy those references, but they will serve you as a guide to learn more about the shapes and the proportions and the light and the shadows. And then when you get it into your memory, you can try to draw even without the reference. But there is nothing wrong when you keep using them. In case you would like to learn to transfer the object from a photograph to your paper, in one of my previous videos I shared few tips how to use a reference for your drawing, so I recommend to check it out. I will also add the link to the description. And the last mistake, uh, there are actually much more mistakes we can talk about, but I would like to give you some time to process these five, so let's try to fix these five and we'll keep the other mistakes for another video, okay? <laughs> and the last one is devoted to a shading part, uh, just a very general one, the most common one according to me and that is using hard pencils or just one pencil for value drawings. In this portrait I'm using more grades of pencils, from F pencil to 4B pencil, from hard to soft grades. I will make a special video about the shading part, but very briefly. As I said before, the F pencil is great for the basic sketch, uh, the basic outlines and for the very light values. Then I use 2B or 3B pencil for the midtones and the light values or the light shadows. And this drawing it is the most uh, of the values as you can see. And 4B pencil for the darkest parts, especially the darkest parts in her eyes, the nostrils, the shadow under her lips. And that is actually because it is a drawing with quite light values. Usually I use also 6B pencil or even a black colored pencil for the darkest parts, the darkest shadows. Again, I do not talk about rough freehand sketches where you use only one pencil for the whole sketch uh, with the cross hatching and hatching technique of shading. I'm talking about realistic value drawings where the 3D effect is created with lights and shadows. So we need to play with different values with higher level of contrast and depth.
So that is all for me for today. I hope this video was helpful for you. In case you want to learn to draw with me or you want to simply support my work, I would be very happy if you consider becoming part of my Patreon family. The link is in the description and in the end of this video as well. Yeah, if it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, also share it with your art friends. In case you want me to make more of these videos or you would like to share your own mistakes, struggles and experience, let me know in the comments, I would like to hear from you. Of course, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon uh, to so you won't miss any of my new videos. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!